All right, all right. Welcome to the Real Estate Block Podcast, where we bring on the guests and ask them the hard questions by taking a deep dive into how they built their teams, marketing strategies, systems, and processes on how they built a machine that spits out consistent deals month after month. With a value given during the show, will help you create and find consistent real estate deals. Today, I have my good buddy, David Lecco on the show. What's up, my man? Aaron, it's so great to be here. Like I said, I was feeling pretty good until I saw how many books you've got stacked on your shelf <laughs> behind you. <laughs> well, like I said, the content that you've been putting out, I've been seeing your, your background shelf. Um, decided I, I had it up, it, man. Uh, Actually, these are all the books I read last year. And I it was 15 books. So that was a huge improvement for me. That's man. These are the books I read last night. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's that's <laughs> that's awesome, man. Uh, and a matter of fact, I mean, well, before we move on, I mean, what was your favorite book out of those that you read? Favorite book was actually called Humor Seriously. It's why using humor at work and in business is really important, and you shouldn't be afraid of doing so. I, I really liked. That oh wow! Book. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to definitely check that out. Um, uh, David, tell us yeah. who you are. Who were you before you got into real estate? And why the heck did you get into this uh, crazy world of real estate? Oh man, before real estate, my life sucked. I was actually <laughs> working as a software developer and I was also the tech support and I was also uh, the trainer. I was like kind of like a one man operation for a small company. And oh, wow. what was really great about that is how much I learned. But what wasn't great about it was the company wasn't hiring to keep up with the demands that all those positions had as our company grew. And so I had um, oftentimes to respond to tech support issues at all kind of crazy hours of the night because the customer was using the software overnight. And so I just um, knew I had a breaking point when at my best friend's wedding, I had to leave the reception, go to my car and fix a bug, you know, during the actual wedding reception with my hotspot. And so that's, that's what my life had come to was um, I, I took the job to learn. And then I was actually just kind of being overworked. And I knew if I was putting in that much effort, which I was willing to do, I wanted to own the company. So hmm. that's what pushed me over the edge uh, when I found out about real estate investing. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you had this company that, to be honest, you were putting way too much work in, probably thinking that you could maybe even run it better yourself. Why did you, what made you decide that real estate was the right avenue and what would your, what was your first deal? How did that, I mean, how'd you even land your first deal? Okay. So the guy I actually worked for the guy who owned this small company, he had five rental properties and I asked him why. And he said, well, if you buy them well, then they're always going to cash flow every single month. And it was like simple hmm. as that. The stocks can go up and down, but these things are going to cash flow every month. So I knew I was like, well, this is my next step. I need to get some rental properties. But he was like, no, 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 none of those will actually work. I got mine in 2008 where the great deals were and you can't get any. And so I was like, shit, that can't be true. I found a real estate investor meetup and they said, drive for dollars, go look for hmm. rundown properties and get in touch with the owners if you want to find a good deal. And so that's what I started doing. But then I missed out on an amazing deal because I was spending all my time driving around and I wasn't following up. I wasn't communicating with the owners. I was just doing the fun part, which is driving around. Mm -hmm. So that's when I built a little widget on my phone because I, I had the software background, you know, but the widget would like, I'd click on the address, it would tell me who owns it, and then it would send a piece of mail to the owner. And so I made that for myself just to solve my follow up issue. And oh, that, wow. of course, turned into a business and uh, helped me get like 10 deals as well. So that's kind of how my path transitioned from working that development job that had so many grueling hours that really sucked to actually getting rental properties and starting a business. Okay, so obviously we're bringing you on. You, you, you're the owner, CEO, founder of the famous app Deal Machine. I mean, good, good on you, dude, for put, putting that together. I mean, that's incredible. Hey, that's the first time somebody ever called me famous, so I'm freaking stoked. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, come on, man. Uh, definitely, you're you're widespread known around the community. You're make you're adding so much value to so many real estate entrepreneurs. Matter of fact, um, you've added so much value to the beginning of my career, my journey. We definitely used your uh, app when we first started getting consistent real estate deals, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But I want to get to the fact of how the heck did you even come up with Deal Machine? And obviously, we'll get back to how you scaled it. But 
Jeez. Okay. So you, so you're in this, you're in this, uh, the software, um, job that you hate, you decided to get, um, these deals. You had this guy saying that you, you can't do it. You missed all that. You missed the opportunity back in 2008. Did, I mean, how did, did somebody come up to you and say, you need to go drive around for dollars? I mean, where did you even come up with the concept of driving for dollars? No, I looked, I read rich dad, poor dad. And then I called their coaching program. I was like, I don't think I want to pay that much for coaching. Let me look if there's a meetup. And I found a meetup and at the meetup, that's the people who told me gotcha. you for dollars. Okay. How did they explain it to you back then? Cause now, cause now it's, Hey, go download deal machine. So yeah, how how did they explain it to you back then? Go look for rundown houses, go look for a hundred, write down the addresses, look up who owns the address, then write them a letter. So I was writing them okay. down, writing actual letters. Oh, wow. And then repeat the letters. <laughs> And if you do that enough, so when, gonna when, call you wanting to sell their house and they're going to have a problem. So they're going to actually need to sell at a discount. And I didn't put the two and two together now, but now it's just like a pawn shop, right? Like I know when you take stuff to the pawn shop, you're not getting the top dollar, but you do it anyway. Cause you just want it out of your hair. You just want the cash. You want to walk away from it. And that's the type of person and that, that would lead to a discounted real estate deal. Hmm. What did your first phone call uh, sound like? So the, the, I remember the first actual like positive phone call um, at right. this point. I don't really remember the other ones, but the first positive phone call came in seven months, seven months after I started doing this. Now I was not oh, adding wow. properties at a quick pace. You know, I was kind of taking right. my time, but um, so anyway, yeah, he had gotten a few postcards, right? Not the first one. He'd gotten a few before he called okay. me and he just said, I need an offer in my house. And I said, can I come and meet you? And he said, yes. And that was so simple. That was so simple, right? I came out there, took a bunch of pictures, asked him some questions, had no idea what I was doing. There was no script because I'm just out there, right? I can't like memorize the script mm -hmm. that quickly. And then I said, I'll give you an offer in 24 hours. And I figured out I was going to offer $10,000. But then I remembered a quote. It said, if you're not feeling uncomfortable about how low your price is, it's probably not low enough in order to make money. So I was like, let me lower it again, $4,872. And that I don't know where I got that round figure, but I'm reading Never Split the Difference right now. And he says mm. it's powerful to show a very specific number that's based off calculations. And so, you know, I think luckily I based it off actual calculations back then and gave him that number. Makes the other person feel like, oh, this was like a thoughtful offer, not just a random even number. So well, my calculation was, was like, okay, it's probably worth a hundred thousand. It's probably going to cost 60 to fix it up and uh, give me an extra 15 for, you know, like an oops factor. And after all subtracting my renovation costs line items, I got to $4,872. 4,000. Wow. Yeah. I even, showed 4, him the, <laughs> I even showed him the calculations. I was like, these are the comps. This is the estimate to redo everything line items. And then mm -hmm. this is why I'm offering you this number. So that's why that I just, I think I remember showing him the actual like calculation because that was how I presented my offer to him. That's awesome, man. And actually the funny thing is the, the low enough, if you, you're not low enough, unless you feel that wrenching gut uh, feeling. And a matter of fact, I think for me, the first person who I heard that from was Cody Hoffine. And uh, yeah, so I, st I stuck with. It. I remember when I was going belly to belly. And now I tell I tell that to to my guys in my office. If you're not, if you don't feel that gut feeling, you're you're not low enough. Okay, so did you end up uh, did you end up getting a contract and selling that deal for uh, thousands and thousands of dollars? I could have. I actually kind of shopped it around to some of the bigger wholesalers that I had uh, to see if they wanted to partner on me with it. But I kept it. That just told okay, me if wow. they wanted to partner on me with it. It was a good enough deal to actually wholesale. So. I kept it. I did the renovation with credit cards and nice. uh, I just own it outright now. It's a rental property. Put, um, like I said, it's been about 65,000. So all in about 70,000. It's been, it's renting, rented now for 1250 per month. Oh, incredible. Hold on. So you bought it. How, how much did you buy it? 4,000? Correct. Yeah. And, and you put 65,000. I mean, what was, yeah. what was the ARV at that time? Um, I always say the ARV is like hundred thousand. It's it's kind of a smaller house Incredible. than normal, but it's like better quality than everything else. So it's it's hard to compare it square footage okay. wise. So David, okay, so you get this first deal. How did you break through the struggle of doing one to two deals? I mean, like I said, it sounded like it took you around seven months just to get your first deal. 
you know, really grinding and having that grit. What broke you through that, that struggle from doing a deal here and there to consistent deal flow? Yeah. So what broke me through, you know, the struggle of getting my first deal to consistent deal flow was just brute force. I just kept at it. I didn't give up and switch to Bitcoin or I didn't you know, <laughs> totally, you know, give up and start e -com. I just kept going and I kept sending communication and I got that deal. And then I just kept it going, um, bought about 10 houses. Then I did stop because Deal Machine, the app, it was never meant to be a business, but one of mm. the persons who leads the meetup, they said they'd try anything for a thousand bucks to try any new marketing method. And I was blown away. So I set the deal machine up, put it on the app store so she could actually buy a thousand dollars worth of mail through it. Oh, and wow. then people started organically finding it. So by the time I got my ninth, 10th house, uh, deal machine was actually very popular. It's gaining a lot of popularity. So I just focused on that for like three years. Um, mm. And so then that brings me to this year. It was like, I look back and all of my properties that I own, they gained like a million dollars in appreciation, like $960,000 in appreciation. Wow. They cash flowed the whole time. And then they added that value to my net worth in that short amount of time. And I was like, ooh, I wish I had bought a lot more. I wish I would have never stopped. You know, it's like, I, I've, I've only heard people in masterminds say, I wish I would have kept more deals. And mm -hmm. now I'm feeling that, right? It's not like pain. But it's like, oh man, like what if I had bought five times more? That would be incredible. Right. And where are you out of now? I live in Austin, Texas, but I do my investing in Indianapolis. Okay, gotcha. So you're not buying any properties in Austin? Only in Indianapolis. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, so okay, so how did okay, so what did you do to scale deal machine? So like I said, it was just kind of a thing that you just had for you and maybe a few people that you knew. It started gaining traction. When did you say a light bulb went off and said, you know, this is going to be a business? It, so when she said she'd try anything for a thousand dollars, I didn't know it would be a business yet, but I didn't hesitate to set up a payment processor account. Mm -hmm. but I put it on the app store and it, after about nine, nine months, um, I actually was like, wow, there's enough people signing up, maybe like five per day. <laughs> You know, because they were searching driving for dollars and deal machine would mm -hmm. come up. Um, but it was like five per day that were willing to like pay. And, pay, you know, wow. so I was walking them through on the phone, took about 30 minutes each person and just telling them how to use the app because it wasn't user friendly. I made it and I'm not good at making apps look good. And I just, you know, do the back end stuff that makes it work. But so that, mm. that's that. OK, there was a moment where I realized I was like, hey, to my best friend, Dave, who's a really good software developer, way better than me. I was like, I think this is a real business. Can you help me remake it? Let's become business partners. Let's own hmm. the business 50-50 each. Let's actually form a business. That was May of 2017. So that was about nine months after I first created the very first version of the app for myself. It does look uh, really good now, dude. Uh, Thank you. you know, with, uh, dude, that's no what a great compliment. <laughs> I'm sure you get that a lot. One thing I like about it is the simplicity. Is that something that you really focused on? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we really took off, thankfully, and we started, you know, doubling and tripling our engineering team size and mm. trying to build every feature that everyone wanted. But Aaron, mm. we went through like a winter. We had like a deal machine winter where we actually made it complicated for somebody just getting started, in, which is our primary person that comes to download the app. It right. became confusing when there were so many options to send mail every which way and to change all these settings. And so, man, we spent a while really trying to simplify stuff. So we still have the advanced settings, but only for like the most expensive plan. And we focused a lot this past year on quality of the app, few bugs and simple, right? Making it very simple to sign up and do what you need to do, which is really just two things, discover properties and send mail. Like those are the two things that you really need to do. And if you're not sending mail, could be text, could be calls, but it's just discover the properties, reach out to the owners. Right, right. No, that's 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 awesome. Let me ask you this. What does your team look like now? Do you have a real estate team or is it just your deal and machine team? So yeah, we have 28 people on the deal machine side, about 15 are customer support, about eight okay. are product and engineering. 
And then we've got a head of finance. I've got an assistant and my assistant, she actually helps with my rental properties in Indianapolis. She receives text messages from the tenants. She checks up on my contractor to make sure his work is quality. And so that's mm. um, big, big help. And she helps with personal things like travel and stuff like that too. So I don't have a full real estate team other than my handyman, Jerry, and, who, and then also my executive assistant that helps me with personal errands and checking up in person on some of that right, work right. That's being done with, with the properties. Nice, nice. Are you, um, I mean, with deal machine, I mean, I, I think, I think I've overheard you. I mean, do you have a driver and do you, I mean, or do you just kind of like stop that and decide to focus fully on deal machine? Yeah, I have a driver too. So I should have said that I, I didn't say that because, um, he's actually, uh, he reports through deal machine actually. So he, mm. we, we kind of pay him under like a software testing category, but he's adding real leads and he's adding leads that I market to that I'm sending marketing to. So we do have the driver. He's been with me for four years, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what is, job. well, okay. So you, so you have a driver, you got this, you got this, um, good size team to, to run your deal machine. What, let me ask you this. I want to dig deep. I don't want to just touch on the good stuff, but what are some of the struggles you think that deal machine might be facing right now to, to give it the community a lot of value? Well, like what are some of the struggles that you're, you're dealing with right now? Okay, well, what are the struggles we're dealing with right now? Things are pretty good right now, Aaron. We're on the up and up. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> I think that people have a mental challenge of finding deals right now. Because okay, they think okay. The interest rates are going to prevent them from getting deals, and then they don't look for deals, so they don't get deals, and then they say it's not. There's no deals. So, but but I know I'm in I'm in several I'm in Ma Collective Genius Mastermind, which is people that do 100 deals per year. I mean, look, they're all still in business. They, I just met them last week. You know, they're all doing deals. So I think people's mentality is one of the biggest challenges right now with the current environment and the interest rate. But just like when the guy said, hey, you, you can't do these deals. I, I did these in 2008. You got to realize that the best time to do deals is right now. Going to look for deals is right now. You can't compare it to 2008. I mean, properties have appreciated probably 2x since 2008, you know? So, and, th and that's the other thing is we get hung up, we get anchored to the recent history of 3% interest rate. But if you zoom out 20 years, of course, everyone's like, well, we had 15% interest rate. What are you right. about? Yeah. So I think, you know, you could compare it to the investing strategy that you hear for, you know, people on the stock side where it's better to dollar cost average, which means like, let me contribute to these stocks and index funds the same amount every month rather than trying to time the market. And so I think that that's the biggest hang up and the biggest challenge right now is people that are like waiting to time the market when in reality, I would definitely be buying deals. I just bought a deal a couple weeks ago that I'm very mm. excited about. And even with the interest rates, it cash flows $600 per month after mortgage taxes and insurance. Oh, wow. Yeah. And at a $160,000 price point. David, you're around a bunch of people all all the time that are in real estate. Obviously, you're in masterminds. You got people um, buying your product. You just brought up what we went through with the interest rates uh, spike. What are your What have you been telling people about, and including yourself, your strategies to get through this interest rate spike and coming out even better on the other side? Yeah, yeah. the strategy to actually get through the interest rate spike and come out great on the other side is to actually, you know. Talk to your buyers to see what properties they want to buy and at what price point. So this was amazing. At one of the meetups I went to in Indianapolis originally, uh, the, they actually were hosting the meetup because they wanted to buy properties from wholesalers for their turnkey company. And so they printed out a spreadsheet that said, if you give me a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house in Washington Township, we will pay $80,000 all in. And of course, mm. those houses are more expensive now. But back then, it was $80,000 all in. And so that gave me concrete evidence of what price I need to lock something up at. So it feels less random when I'm talking to somebody and I don't really know what the house is worth. I don't really know what somebody's willing to buy it for. And of course, their spreadsheet was like pretty conservative. If, if, if I got a property they would buy, I know I could sell it for more to someone else. And so I also knew that it was a great deal for me if they were actually buying it at that price. It gave me confidence to take deals down myself. So... I think reverse engineering your business, 
from what buyers in your area actually right. want to buy is a great piece of advice. Right, right. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Let me ask you this. The the most successful people, because you get to, uh, one thing you do, and I encourage people to go watch your channel, you're constantly um, interviewing these successful um, people that are using your app. What do you think is the number one strategy that you're seeing collectively that is just being able, if I want to go download Deal Machine tomorrow, what's the number one piece of advice that you would give somebody to go dominate driving for dollars? Yes. Um, first of all, add 500 properties that look run down immediately, no matter what market you're in. And second, talk to somebody who's successfully doing deals in your market, driving for dollars, and then see how many pieces of mail they send out in order to get a deal. And because you're a beginner, expect to double it and commit to doing that. Most people actually say, oh, it doesn't work in my market. I'll say, well, let me see how many properties did you add? And they've added 20 and it's not right. their fault, but they just don't hear enough that what the numbers are. It is a mathematical equation. You have to talk to enough people in order to find an opportunity. You can't just give up after talking with 20. But if you don't know that, it's very hard to hear 20 no's, right? Or send 20 pieces of mail and hear nothing back. You just know, you have to know your numbers. But I would say across the country, a good goal would be get to 500 rundown properties as soon as possible and send mail to them six times each at least. Because every marketing advice out there says people don't respond until you've actually communicated a few times with them. Uh, no, I mean, that, and that's just pretty much the generic advice, right? Be consistent, have some grit. Um, industry, yeah. Yeah. And it's any, it's any market. It's not difficult, right? It's right. a proven business model. You're not inventing a new business model. It's a proven business model. So if you just work it, it will work for you. One thing I want to uh, kind of point out. I want to ask you, do you remember me like way back, uh, was it two years ago? Do you remember us doing like an interview? Oh yeah. You came to my house and you delivered some pizza and you're like, man, I'm just trying to get into real estate. And then I was like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you no, didn't have no, a beard back a then though. That's right. That's right. No, one thing. And the reason why I say that is because you, your team have definitely changed um, the way we do things. Like I said, you have added value so to so many different businesses out there. When, because when I first started, you know, we were doing the normal. I'm sure you've heard the same story time and time again. We pulled the generic list, we called text, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you, we weren't getting any, um, you know, that, that that feedback that you would get from creating your list. I just remember that light bulb going off and saying, you know, what? I need to create my own list. I need to go go dr and then I drive for dollars, right? That's something I've heard time and time again. And then obviously we downloaded drive for dollars and it was just deal after deal after deal. And especially, and, and we do it in Southern, we did that in Southern California. We ended up, me and my wife started driving all around. We were adding like crazy amount of properties. Uh, you know, I mean, we were just tagging neighborhoods, but then we would text them, call them, dress and direct mail. And then that's how we really got our footing and, and we're able to scale, I think, faster than just send it, just, just pull in generic lists, especially when you start with no money, right? Let alone I was in personal debt at the time. Um, and again, my story is, you know, we could go over that another time, but, and, and then that what got us out of debt. And now we're, we are running a nationwide model now, PPC and all that stuff. But at that time, I mean, it, driving for dollars is what really got us to, to scale if you have little to no money. But I mean, we started, we started getting some rippers with uh with deal machine dang tell me about those rippers how much better were they than the ones you were doing before when you're pulling lists and sending mail oh yeah definitely definitely because nobody's nobody's hitting them right it was it was that it was the list that no one has the one you are able to create yourself and that's what you're able to do i mean i mean it's pretty cool you have a whole database full of lists that nobody has right well it's everyone's list that they've put in a deal machine themselves. I'm not like marketing to their list, but yeah. Right, right. I guess that was hard to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, I'm curious though, in Southern California though, about like how many properties run down did you have to add in order to get a deal, would you say? Man, I, I got to look back on those numbers. But like I said, our I remember at our goal, at our height, we were probably adding like 2,000 a week. Uh, 2,000 we a week. 2,000 a week. Yeah. Dang. We, and, we have a lot of properties out here in Southern California, right? Um, I mean, we oh, were yeah. definitely, we were I mean, definitely you, you going drive from, excuse me, <clears throat> San Diego to Los Angeles, and it's endless neighborhoods. Oh yeah. If you're and in Indianapolis and you drive 15 minutes, you're like out of the city and it's farmland. <laughs> right. In some in some cities that we we would go to, um, you know, you you tag the entire city. Um, it felt like right. 
And so, I mean, like I said, there are neighborhoods that are just fully run down and don't be afraid to add the entire block if you have to. I mean, they're all run down. They all could use some value. That's the whole point of uh, why real estate investing is really saying investors add value to the neighborhood. Yeah, we buy at discounts, but man, we sure add value to, to our neighborhood. So love that. So you've actually, um, have you ever tried the tap to add mode where you can easily tap the properties or do you, do you actually take time to add a photo of every property that you add? No, great, great question, man. Um, speaking about, you know, with your app, great. Um, no, we do, we did the tap to add, man. Um, so what we would do is, uh, we would just go down and just, we'd, we'd slowly drive down, tap, 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 tap. Uh, we did not sit, we did not uh, sit back and take the photos. It's definitely a great feature if, if you want to do it that way. But no, we, uh, I wanted, we needed volume. So that's how we were able to get uh, properties. Um, Cause you know, and again, if you're just stopping it at every single stop, I mean, you're going to get into an accident, right? So yeah. one well, thing I, I had a question for you. For sure. I noticed you have a really great logo, Seller's New Day. On your hmm. mail, do you actually put that logo on or do you put a picture of yourself or your family on or your team on? Great question. No. So when we did direct mail, it was just a blanket, ugly postcard with not our company on it um, because we don't want bad, you know, you can get bad reviews and stuff like that. Now, that's just my philosophy. A lot of people do put their own company on their postcard. Um, but no, we didn't put any pictures. We just if they called us, you know, that's that's all that mattered. So, yeah. Well, and I know that people actually if they see your face, I've heard hmm. that a lot better response rate. And it oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So well, that's. Do you send mail on. out anymore or how do you communicate with the driving for dollars leads that you have now? Right. So drive so uh sending mail to our drive for dollars list was spot on at that time. Uh we that's where I think we got most of our rippers. Uh, but no, we don't do um, direct mail at this time. We did a little bit beginning of this year, but we like I said, we're nationwide PPC at this moment. We run that model. So we run a um, basically a 2,500 square foot office with uh, just a bunch of salespeople on the phone. Um, you know, so they leads come in. We get locked up, we sell it. So, but like I said, so we don't, we don't uh, do the, the heavy lifting anymore with um, driving ourselves or hiring anybody to do that, even though it still works. So if we wanted to keep doing it, we definitely could. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but let me ask you this, David, what is your pitch? I mean, so are you still growing or you feel like you're still at that, that time? I mean, do you feel like you've hit your peak? I mean, oh, where's deal machine going? Where's deal machine going from here? Oh, no, no way. Not at all. You know how many actual wholesalers are in those Facebook groups online? There's literally <laughs> millions. So, the, you know, the fact that I can look and see what how many subscribers that we have compared to how many people are out wholesaling, nowhere near saturated. And yeah, we're still growing. Mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, you're definitely doing all the marketing. You're definitely going to all the the groups. I mean, now you're word of mouth. I think you're in bigger pockets. I mean, what what are where else can you go hit? Where else can I go hit? Um that's a really good question. And I think that we can just do, there's quite a few popular podcasts that we, we don't buy ads on and that we aren't mm. mentioned on. So I think that those are some opportunities for us. That's awesome, man. And I see that you, like I said, you're, you're definitely getting your online presence out there. What, here's the thing. So I'm in CG as well. And I know they're really promoting to, to promote your personal brand. That's kind of why we started this as well. Oh, is that yeah, where, cool. yeah, yeah. Is that where you kind of, um, decided to get that umph to uh start getting your personal brand out there or it was just something that you wanted to start promoting deal machine more i mean we'll, we'll have, you're getting out there man i love it oh thank you so much man yeah so i actually noticed that my business totally grew from people's personal brands that referred people to deal machine and so i wanted to just build the skill to learn how to do that myself and so mm. i set on a mission to build my own skill rather than to do anything business related wise you know maybe Maybe, maybe people who know me see me more like you, right? Maybe that's why you had me on this podcast. I never know. But the, the whole purpose is to let me build the skill of educating and then helping people become real estate investors. Because a lot of beginners come to us and then they need more than just the app to do a deal. They need to know how to talk to a seller and they need to know a few other things that the app isn't you know, going to do. Well, now the app has an AI assistant that can help you talk to a seller. So maybe tell I can me, tell, tell us more about that retire my social media account efforts. But so yeah, ChatGPT obviously came out earlier this year. And if you don't know, you can just chat with it and ask it questions and it can tell you stuff. It's very smart. It can write poems for you. It can write a paragraph podcast description for you. Um, and it, the only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't know current market real estate data, but through Deal Machine, we you can access ChatGPT and then it has actual 
access to our real estate data. So you can ask it, what is this house worth? Or you can ask it, how should I extend an offer to this person? Or the, the seller said this, what should I say back? And it's a mobile app companion inside deal machine that can access that real estate data to help a beginner overcome analysis paralysis and get confidence to take the hmm. actions they need to take to get their first deal and make $20,000. Love it. I speaking about chat GPT, I used this, uh, I used it yesterday. So, um, we, we've been doing a lot of interviews and stuff to try. We're building our team. And there was, um, a few, there was a guy that I knew I needed to send an email saying, Hey, I'm sorry. We, you know, we decided to go somewhere else. And I, I've been really bland on like how I say, I just basically like, no, we're not going with you. Right. right? I just don't even respond. I was like, I gotta get better at this. So I used GPT to write me an email to say, Hey, sorry, we're not going to move forward with you. And I wrote, I had him write me an email that said, uh, Hey, yes, we want to hire you. When can you start? You know? And man, it, it gave me some good email, uh, yeah. To, to put <laughs> so. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you you know, if you have like a, a person who wrote you a bad review, you could copy and paste the review and say, Hey, can you can you type me a response to this person and win this customer back? Oh, and there you go. We'll do it better than you, I bet. Not you okay. specifically, but just anyone. Yeah, no. So how so how are you using chat GBT or the AI? Um, and I've been hearing this go around, um, talk to sellers. Like, how did like are, are you just like What's you know, that? I, I don't have it talk to sellers, but it can help you negotiate. If you're gotcha. like, the seller said this, what would you say back? Really? Uh, okay. I don't talk directly to sellers, but it's a companion to help a beginner overcome their fear or the you know lack of certainty to get that first deal. How does that work? And how does that work on the deal machine app? Well, it's just like ChatGBT. You could chat with it, except okay. it, it has access to real estate data, so it is smarter when you're using it through the deal machine app because it has access to the real estate data. Gotcha, gotcha. Let me ask you this, David. What have you read or listened to that just inspired you recently? Because we know that the entrepreneurship and including even, even successful deal machine and go through those ups and you know the valleys and the trials and tribulations. I mean, what, what keeps you uh, motivated? Um, I mean, oh, yeah. t tell, me, tell me what goes on in uh, David, David's head. Yeah, I'm doing deals again. And so I got a lot out of Steve Trang's presentation at The Collective Genius recently. I'm also mm. reading Never Split the Difference. Steve gave a great presentation on anchoring. Anchoring is so important whenever you're talking about giving an offer on somebody's house because you'll often feel uncomfortable and people just don't make those phone calls. So they miss out on those deals. And so um, anchoring is something where you can say like, hey, you know what cash buyers are the, in your neighborhood? They're actually paying 220 for this type of property. How would you feel if somebody gave you 220? And 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 then they're like, ooh, that's that's I would be pissed, you know. So then, but but you're anchoring them at that low price, and then you can come in where you want to later, and they've already been anchored down below. They're gonna think yours is better, um, mm. and you're not gonna be the, the lowest price that they get pissed off at because you already anchored them to what was happening in that market. So that I would say, Steve Trang and that book, Never Split the Difference, hand in hand, talking about anchoring. Awesome. Awesome. No, uh, never split the difference. Obviously a, a, a classic. Have you read any of the sales books? Of Steve's sales books? Just, just any sales books. I've read sales books in the past. Not recently though. Okay. <laughs> what, what was, uh, like I said, I know you told me earlier, um, another book that, you, you know, you said that the, the humor book, what, what's another book that you had over there on, on your shelf that just really inspired you? Yeah, another book that really inspired me was The uh, Great CEO Within by Matt Mokeri. And oh, wow. A huge, yeah, when you have a team, um, a huge thing that I learned from that was how to give proper feedback. And I used that to demonstrate to my team how to give and receive feedback. That way people don't let feelings fester and people get mad mm. at each other, but they're really encouraged to have hard conversations on the regular. In fact, I even made them give hard conversations during our monthly all-hands meeting. You had to be assigned to somebody and give them feedback publicly in front of everyone. And I oh, acted wow. as the referee. I was like, nope, you didn't say it right. Say that again. <laughs> right. And then they'll be like, nope, you didn't respond right. Respond either this way or that way. It's your choice. Yeah. You can choose how to respond. But you've got to do it this way. And so that really built the muscle for my team. Hopefully, I've definitely noticed a difference to give feedback. So that was, that was something. We don't do that now because I had to force them to give feedback. And sometimes they honestly just didn't have anything. So but I made them say something meaningful in order to pass that part of this thing. So we did that for like six months. It came from the book. It's a beautiful book, just yeah. an incredible book. Matt Mokeri, he's actually a Silicon Valley CEO, 
replacement coach. Like he, he basically will get hired to be the coach of like Reddit, for example, Mm -hmm. um, back in the day. And then he would actually literally take over the CEO's job and like run meetings and run one-on-ones for like three months while the actual CEO like observed. And so Mm -hmm. like he wasn't replacing that person, but he was demonstrating how to get the ship in line while the, like the actual CEO observed. So that was, that's where he's coming from. So he's got a wealth of knowledge on how he does things. Gotcha. Gotcha. One thing too, before I let you go is, um, you, you came out this little short clip and I, I, I related so well to it. And a lot of people are going to probably think, uh, I'm crazy for saying this, but it was the fact that the sports clip that, mm. so back in high school, I played football and everything, but I never was a big component of watching football, watching baseball. Cause I always wanted to, I'd rather play it. I always felt like there was something that re- watching sports, there was nothing I could do to make my team win or lose. And that's why I love entrepreneurship so much. And that's why I think you love um, entrepreneurship as well. And cause with that, you're able to, whatever you put into it and you're able to strategize and you're able to, to maneuver things around and create this team and create actions and plays and, you know, obviously win, you know? And so that, I thought that was really cool that, cause I was like, I was like me and my wife, including my wife, we don't watch sports cause there was just nothing you could do to add or take away value from, from a sport. Yeah. Yeah. I'd never watched sports. My parents never watched sports. And so it's fun to know about stuff and talk about it with people, For sure. but I'm not spending my time on my own to go learn that stuff. Right. So, um, I, I spend a ton of my time learning how to wake surf. I want to do a competition and win a wake surf oh, nice. for people that have wake surf for a year. And I also joined this local club where we race these like 30 year old cheap cars and I want to win. I've hired a coach. I'm getting better. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So that, I mean, but I, I'm like, I don't even watch racing, but I want to become better. I love getting better at things. So it was just something I noticed about myself and the video landed with a lot of people out there because it's counterculture not to watch sports. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, that's why, that's why I, I love, I, I love that. I really related to that, but no, I mean, obviously the key to happiness is growth. And like I said, you're, you're finding a coach to, to get better and all these other things, David, where can we, you know, find you? on social media where can we find uh, where can we listen for you and where can we download the deal machine app i mean tell, tell us where where we can find you please find me on instagram d leco that's my instagram handle that's my primary social media and then you can download deal machine at dealmachine.com awesome brother hey david it was such an honor to have you on here to add value to, to kind of chop it up with you i mean like i said your your company yourself have changed my life and the way we did things um especially starting out and you continue to change my life thank you so much david and hey we'll see you next time here at the real estate block podcast man you th- the honor is all mine thank you so much 10 out of 10 host uh thanks brother <laughs>